Good to be with you today. My name's David Effler, and I'm pastor of Matthew 633, Open Our Baptist Church. I appreciate you, and uh, I appreciate God watching over us. Amen. Down through another wonderful day that God's given us, and uh, I'm running a little bit late today, and uh, we uh, chose not to have our service earlier today. We went over and watched the, the new movie, Left Behind, by Kevin Sorbo, and, and uh uh, it was truly a blessing. I praise God for uh, those people that will step a, step out of the traces. You know, I mean, Kevin had a, a wonderful career through uh, uh, and everything, and, but he stepped out to do something for the goodness of God. And you know what? I appreciate that from all of my heart. Amen. The Bible says to put on the whole armor of God. And after you've got it on, then just make a stand. Amen. And uh uh, if you've not seen it yet, I, I encourage you uh, to uh, take the time uh, to go see it today. And uh, we're back with you this afternoon, and uh, I appreciate uh, you tuning in today. We're going to try our best by the help of God and uh, to get back into the Word of God. And we're going to be in Second Timothy uh, chapter 2, verse 19 today. Got a very special prayer request for you today. Uh, uh, I've got a grandniece, uh, my sister's granddaughter, and uh, uh, she was diagnosed just the other day with uh, thyroid cancer, and I think it's in her lint notes also. Uh, the uh, Ashti, from the deep hole of our hearts, is a family. Uh, if, you, if God brings this to your mind, would you please pray and ask God to touch in that situation? Her name is Helena Bryson, and uh, she lives down on 107. She's a sweet person, and uh, uh, this is not real good news for the family, and uh, I appreciate you pray that God would give grace and strength, be with her through her surgeries, and, and if she has to do the treatments, uh, the treatments also. But more than that, pray that God would touch and heal, because he is the great healer. Amen. And I praise his wonderful name for that. And uh, our faith, uh, a lot of times, is what makes things real, friend. And uh, God knows our heart, friend. We need a miracle uh, in, our, in our church world today. We need God to step in and, and do, and do the, uh, the things that mankind cannot do. Amen. Friend, we're living in the last days. And, and I trust God and, uh, to be faithful to his people and to his children. Amen. Friend, if you're saved by God's marvelous grace this morning and, and you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, amen, then you are a heir and a joint heir with Jesus the righteous, amen, in the kingdom of heaven. You and I have been adopted into the family of God by the blood that Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary. Amen. And don't ever forget, friend, you're somebody down here in this world. The devil's trying his best to step out Christianity. He's trying his best to do away with the word of God. Uh, this is the battle is raging right now, greater than I've ever known it in my lifetime. And uh, I believe that we have a, a urgency, friend, as Christians, as children of God, uh, to, let, uh, to let people know. Amen. Uh, you get a chance wherever you're at, uh, at the grocery store, on the workplace, uh, meet somebody at the service station. If you're down there pumping gas and somebody's next to you, uh, strike up a conversation with them and, uh, and, and give God a little bit of praise. Amen. Uh, I know things is getting bad, but it's going to get worse, friend, before it gets better. And uh, uh, the getting better, friend, is when Jesus Christ says, come up hither, children, and we go up to be with the Lord. Lost friend, if you're, not, if you're hearing my voice today and you're not prepared to meet God, I ask you by the mercies of God, uh, friend, that you would listen to what thus saith the word of God. And that that you feel down in your heart, uh, friend, the power of the Holy Spirit of God nudging you uh, to cry out to Jesus and ask him to come into your heart, friend. He's knocking at your heart's door right now, lost friend. Uh, and, and, he, and he's been a-knocking for a good while. Ever since you become uh, aware of good and evil, friend, 
um, and came to the age of accountability. Jesus has been knocking at your door. Amen. And because he knocks at your door, uh, and sometimes he's really long suffered, suffering. Friend, you might be way up in your years. I'm 66 years old, and I know several men that's my age that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know what? They've been a multitude of prayers prayed for these people. And one of these days, friend, one of these days when the conditions is right and they hear the word of God and the God and the Holy Spirit of God speaks to their heart and shows them that need uh, for a savior. And I'm sure that God has showed them time and time and time again. But you know what? God's got great mercy. The Bible says in one place that he's long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. Amen. All right, let's get into the scripture uh, this, that God has given us this week. And uh, uh, I appreciate uh, uh, the word of God. I'm in 2 Timothy chapter 2. Once again, uh, there's, uh, there's more in this than you, you'll ever get out. And I thank the Lord and praise him. I thought maybe I might get on into chapter 3, uh, but not this week. Amen. So we're going to, uh, we want you to turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2. We'll be taking a text out of verse 19 here in just a minute. But we want to start reading by the help of the Lord. Uh, and uh, uh, in verse 13, listen to what it says. In verse 13, it says, If we believe not, now notice how that is. If we believe not, it's got a comma there. It says stop. Uh, uh, yet, talking about he, and he is who? Uh, the God of heaven, friend, uh, and the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit of God. They three make up the uh, uh, the Godhead. Amen. He says, yet he abideth faithful. Amen. Praise his wonderful name for his faithfulness. And then there's two little dots there. And uh, that means to stop and look at that just a minute. It's not a semicolon. It means, you know, there's a stop coming that sent in that sentence. Yet he abideth faithful. Amen. Praise his wonderful name. He was faithful to touch my heart and show me my need for a savior. And he gave me the faith to call out on Jesus. And Jesus come into my heart and made me a fit vessel for the kingdom of God. I praise his wonderful name for what God can do. Amen. See, and then the last, the, little part, the last little part in that verse, it says he cannot deny himself. Amen. He cannot deny himself. Amen. You know why? Because he is truth, friend. And without him, there is no truth in this world. Uh, he came, amen, and he gave his life a ransom that you and I might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. You can count on that, friend, today. I'm telling you the truth, what Jesus Christ done. Amen. He said, of these things, put them in remembrance. And I like that. You know, God called me to preach back in 1995. And, uh, uh, you know, little verses of scripture like that right there, uh, blesses my heart. Amen. And then, then it says, charging them, uh, before the Lord that they strive not about vain words, uh, to no profit. Friend, there's a lot of foolishness going on out here in this world and they've drawn away a lot of people. And, uh, I remember in, in my lifetime, a couple of emphases on everything. There was a, a gentleman called. David Koresh, uh, that he uh, uh, drawed away a whole bunch of people uh, and uh, uh, took them to their death, friend. They believed in what he had to preach, and, and they followed him. Friend, uh, he, he was no Messiah, friend. He was a false god, is what he was to them people. Uh, and they paid the ultimate price. I hope and pray, uh, friend, that they were some of them people there they genuinely believed and trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, there's a lot of vain words going on out there in this world. And then Paul's pen in here to Timothy, uh, you know, that, you know, to charge him, not, not to get caught up in that stuff is what he's just saying. Uh, not to get caught up in it, which it's no profit, friend. It don't, it don't profit anything. But to the subverting of the hearers, in other words, uh, in other words to be plain. Uh, to the people that is here. In other words, give them what you're getting from God, the gospel, the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said in one place over there, I believe it's in 2 uh, uh, Corinthians uh, chapter 2, 
might be 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I can't remember just exactly which I, I it is. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, he said over there, he said, Brethren, I save to know nothing among you, uh, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Uh, friend, uh, that's the gospel in a nutshell. And if I preach Jesus Christ, friend, I'll preach you the whole volume of this book. Amen. Because he came in the beginning. Uh, he was there when him and the Father created all things. Uh, and, uh, and not only did he create all things, uh, but before the foundation of this world was, he said, Father, I'll go redeem them back. Before Adam and Eve was ever formed, God knew that they would fail. Amen. And God knew that they would need a redeemer. Amen. Uh, God, slay the, uh, God shed the first blood uh, here on this earth when he killed the little animals and he took their skins and made them coverings to cover their shame. Amen. And you know what, uh, friend, uh, there's no shamefacedness out here in the world today. Uh, the, lost, the lost world, uh, to quote a uh, uh, mythical preacher, uh, in one of the comments that, was, uh, that uh, I've heard him preach before, he said, I'm never amazed when lost people act lost, friend. And, uh, uh, you know, that's just the way it was. When I was lost and, and done without a Savior, friend, uh, when I was walking according to the course of this world, uh, I didn't act like a Christian. I act like somebody that was lost and undone. Uh, whatever the devil wanted me to do, most of the time, that's what I done. Uh, friend, I didn't try to get out here and, and try to be something I want. I was just a sinner uh, uh, out here in this world, a following after whatever the, uh, that the devil would lay out there for me. I was after it whole hog. But there come a day in time, friend, uh, when sound doctrine came to my ears, amen, uh, amen. And I heard what thus saith the word of God. And God pricked my heart and showed me uh, a sinner, lost and undone and on my way to hell, amen. And then he sent the Holy Spirit down into my heart and soul and he began to shake me. Uh, friend, to the point there have been times that I've stood uh, on the back row of the church and held on to the back of the pew and trembled uh, before God. Uh, before I ever yielded my heart and life to him. My friend, you know something? Uh, December the 12th, 1978, when I fell out of that back seat uh, and I made my way down to an old-fashioned altar, uh, and then I got my heart right with God, Jesus Christ come into my heart. Uh, I opened that door and he came in and he supped with me ever since. Friend, I don't think there's ever been another time, and I've spent a lot of time in church, uh, that I've got a hold of the back of the pew and trembled uh, before God. You know why? Uh, because the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation uh, to them that believe. Amen. To uh, you out there, friend, in the world today, the Bible even plainly says, friend, that what I'm doing right now, preaching to you the word of God, it might sound foolish to you, friend. Amen. Uh, but let me tell you something, uh, uh, friend, out there in this world, if you'll open an ear and let God touch, and friend, you can have an opportunity to be saved uh, by God's marvelous grace. Well, let's get on down into uh, uh, verse 15. Listen to what it says. Verse 15, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needeth not be ashamed, uh, rightly dividing the words of truth, friend, uh, this truth right here, this is the truth of God's word. Amen. And uh, you say, preacher, have you rightly divided it ever since you've been uh, uh, saved by God's marvelous grace? No, friend, uh, through ignorance, uh, friend, and not having uh, the, the, the learning that I probably need. There's probably been times that I've misrepresented. Uh, some things concerning the word of God, but I did it ignorantly. I wasn't doing it, friend, uh, to lead somebody astray or to uh, to point them some other direction than, than the Lord Jesus Christ. Friend, my aim is today, uh, lost friend, uh, to show Jesus Christ to you. And, and by showing Jesus Christ to you, I can show you the truth. Uh, of God's word. Listen to what it says. Now I'm going to read just a little bit over here in a, in a verse or two of scripture uh, about uh, a group of people. This is a group of people that turned their back on God. Uh, they turned their back on the truth of God's word. In the book of 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, uh, I want to read something to you right here. Uh, and I'm going to start reading in verse 7. It says, For the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. 
Only he that now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Talking about the Holy Spirit of God, friend. Uh, he says, and then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. That's talking about uh, the Antichrist, friend, this fiction. I mean, I believe he's preparing his sermons right now, the Antichrist, so that he can preach to a world because there's a world eager to listen to him. And you say, how do you know that, friend? Uh, because listen to what it says here. He says, even whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power. Uh, friend, say, uh, the Antichrist is going to have power. Signs and lying wonders. Amen. He's going to come with, he's going to deceive the people. Uh, that's out here in the world. You'll find in the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 24 over there, that there's a verse of scripture says that if, if it were possible, that he would deceive even the very elect of God, friend. Uh, and uh, uh, he's coming that way. Now, listen to verse 10. With all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish, them that perish, it's got a semicolon there. It says, just slow down and look at that just a minute. And I look back at that. With them, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. In other words, he's going to deceive them, uh, friend, that done what? That, uh, that are down here in this world because they, are, they was left behind. Amen. They were left behind because they receive not the love of truth. Amen. What is the love of truth, friend? The love of truth is that Jesus Christ come into this world to save old sinners like you and like me. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is the truth, friend, that saves. Amen. That's the truth that gives eternal life down here in this world. If you'll only believe that today and ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart, amen. He said, and for this cause shall God sin. Uh, let me let me see that. Let me read this again. That I didn't get all of it. Let me, let me go back and get verse 10 again. It says, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of truth that they might be saved. Amen. They didn't believe. Amen. Belief is the is the hinge, friend, that opens the door to let Jesus Christ come into your heart. Amen. It's uh, that's the working of the Holy Spirit of God. Our belief in this, friend, tells us uh, to study to show ourselves approved unto God. A workman needeth not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the words of truth. And for this cause shall God send strong delusions that they should believe a lie. That they should believe a lie. And that they all might be damned who believed not the truth. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. Amen. I didn't realize I was going with that today. Uh, but God spoke to my heart on the way back up the road about that. And I just thank him and praise him, friend. Uh, that we have the truth of God's word. Uh, down in our heart and soul. He says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needeth not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the words of truth, friend. Uh, you've got something special to tell people, friend. Uh, God, God, God called us. He saved us uh, into uh, a good work. Friend, you've been, you, a holy calling is on you. What is that holy calling? Uh, that you give your testimony out there before a lost and dying world. If it ain't nothing more than thank God that Jesus Christ saved my wretched soul. Amen. If that's all you've got to say, it's sufficient, friend. Little is much with God. But friend, let me tell you something. If you've walked according to the course of this world for any length of time, you've saw the ugliness that's out there. You know what's out there in this world, friend. And that, and that ugliness, the greed, uh, uh, the, the unrighteousness, the filth, the niceness uh, of this world, uh, uh, the, the, the depravity of man, 
Uh, you, you see that, lost friend, if you're out there in this world living out there daily. Uh, these people that will lie to you with a straight face uh, and never blink an eye. They, uh, matter of fact, it's hard to tell anymore whether people uh, are lying or not. Why? Because they've refused to believe the truth and God has seared their heart over as with a hot arm, friend. Uh, and they believe what they're saying. You know, there's stuff going on right now in, in, in the, the people that's running our country uh, right now. Uh, you know, you, you say, you say, well, that, that's no, that's not got a lot of truth in it and everything. But if you, if you just pin them down and, and they believe what they're saying, friend, they do, they believe what, what they're saying to be the truth. And, but you and I, friend, that are saved by God's marvelous grace, we know the truth. The truth is that you and I that are saved by God's marvelous grace, we're going somewhere or another. Uh, and it's not what we have down here in this world. Amen. Uh, it's what that we've got to give to somebody. Amen. You've got something very precious, dear friend, that's saved by God's marvelous grace living down inside of you. And Paul penned in one place over there. He said, it's from faith unto faith. Amen. My faith in God uh, and what they see in me will cause them to want to want that same faith, amen, down in their heart and soul. And, and the Holy Spirit of God works like that. Uh, and, he's, and he chooses uh, the foolishness of preaching, teaching, singing, testifying, uh, just living, the, being a, a, a living example for uh, the Lord. Uh, Romans 12, 1, he said, that, he said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, uh, that you present your body a living sacrifice, amen. Uh, you know, if you show forth God in your heart and life and in your body by the way, by your demeanor, by your language, by the way you conduct yourself uh, out there in the, in the world, by holding your tongue and, 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 and not, not railing and stuff on people all the time and everything, what's that show forth? That shows forth the love of God down in your heart and soul. You say, well, I know a lot of good people uh, that don't go to church that acts like that. Well, what you need to do, go to that individual and everything and ask them, what makes the difference in you? Look at them, just look them straight in the eye and say, are you saved by God's marvelous grace? Just look at them and ask them. I mean, it's, it's a simple question. And most of them people will look at you and they say, yes, I believe and trust in God for the salvation of my soul. Bring going to church is, is uh, uh, the Bible says you and I, we're not to forsake our, forsake the assembly and of ourselves to the gather for the manner of some is. Uh, spending that little bit of time going out to be with people of like passion. And uh, there's an old saying, friend, birds of feather flock together. <laughs> Did you ever see that? Did you ever see a... Uh, a bunch of, uh, uh, like a, a multitude of different kinds of birds flying together and all in one flock. And no, they seek out people, uh, uh, birds of like, that looks like them, talks like them and acts like them. And they, and they flock together. Friend, if you go out to a nightclub and, and, uh, uh, you walk into a nightclub somewhere or another, and, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in there that, uh, for a Christian had not ought to be. Uh, and everything, uh, if you can walk in there and sit down uh, and order you a, a Coke or something other to drink, and you can sit there and be comfortable, be comfortable in that place and enjoy it, uh, there is a good chance, friend, that you don't have uh, the love of God down in your heart and soul the way you need the love of God down in your heart and soul. Amen. Uh, if you're comfortable with being in a place where that there's a lot of foolishness going on and stuff that hadn't that you hadn't ought to be around, uh, best thing you can do is check up and find out if everything's all right with you. Yeah, man. Now let's get on down. I ain't even got to uh, the 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 title of the message yet, and I praise His wonderful name. Though, let me read just another verse or two of scripture to you. Uh, verse sixteen. It says, "But shame profane and vain babbling, uh, for they." Uh, do increase unto the more ungodliness, uh, ungodliness, and their word uh, will eat as do a canker 
of whom is uh, Hemius and Philistus, who concerning the truth have Arad saying uh, that the resurrection is past already uh, and, and overthrow the faith of some. Amen. Now, there's a lot of false people out there in this world that's leading people in a lot of different directions, friend. Amen. But the truth of God's word, I believe that a, a, that a God-called man, I'm talking about a God-called man, not an educated, uh, granny-called man. I'm talking about a God-called man. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not hard on education. I've got an a associate's degree in the ministry also. Uh, amen. But I didn't go get that degree and choose this as a vocation. God called me in 95, amen, after several years of being saved by God's marvelous grace and putting me through school, amen. God called me into the ministry, and then a few years ago, uh, I'd, I'd done, uh, done a little studying, and, and I got an associate's degree in the ministry, uh, friend, but it never really helped me. It never helped my calling a bit, amen. I learned a long time ago to lean not to my own understanding, but in all of my ways acknowledge the Lord. Uh, amen. If I preach to you, dear friend, today, it's because God's preaching right here. It's coming in right back up here somewhere or another. I've got a little bald spot in the back of my head, and maybe that's, maybe that's the reason why it's bald. Amen. God's, uh, uh, God's preached a higher off of it for me. But anyway, uh, it's going in there, and it's coming out here. Uh, amen. Because I give my mouth to God. Amen. And I give these stammering lips to God. And I give these eyes uh, that jumps around on a page of me trying to read. Uh, I give it to God. Amen. I've presented my body to him as a living sacrifice to be used any way that he possibly can use me. And I thank the Lord that he called me into the ministry. Uh, amen. Uh, to do what little bit I can do. Amen. If I get over on the other side, friend, and... and they began to hand out a few rewards. And the, and the Lord looks at me and said, David, there's a few people uh, that heard you, uh, uh, the word of God that I gave you, and they believed and trusted in, the, in my darling son, the Lord Jesus Christ, for the salvation of their soul and everything. Uh, I appreciate what you've done. Amen. But see, you have to yield, friend. Uh, you have to yield to that. It ain't nothing that, uh, if you even give a testimony, friend, yield to the power of the Holy Spirit of God and let God speak, friend. Don't try to frame a bunch of words that sounds good uh, out there to, uh, the, the, to the hearers. Uh, you might, uh, well, you might edify a little bit there in the church, you man. But if you get anything from God, friend, uh, and God gives it to you, you man, and it's seasoned with the power of the Holy Spirit of God, those that hear know where it's coming from. Amen. They know. Amen. Now then, let's look at verse 19. This is one I took my, my, uh, the title of the message out of, and I'll give you the title of the message just in a moment. Uh, in verse 19, he said, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, uh, having, uh, stand this year, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Look up there down in the second line of that verse of scripture, and you'll see the, the words, God standeth sheer. Amen. God standeth sheer. Sheer. Amen. Now, I want to read a verse of Scripture to you over the book of Hebrews. Uh, and uh, it's a wonderful verse of Scripture. And I, I like, uh, I love it. Amen. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Listen to what it said. He says, Hold fast, therefore the profession of our faith, without wavering. Without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. Amen. Let's go back over to our scripture. Look what it says in verse 13 once again. If you believe not, friend, it, it doesn't matter whether you believe what I'm preaching today or not. But friend, if you're saved by the God's marvelous grace, you have believed what I'm preaching today. And then it says, yet he abideth faithful. Amen. And then when we get down here in verse 19, he said, In the foundation of God stand assured. Amen. 
What is this foundation? Amen. If you remember back over in the Gospels, uh, Jesus was walking down the seashore over there and uh, his 12 disciples were following him, probably a whole lot more. Uh, there was a lot of them following him around just for what they could get to eat, uh, but uh, that physical food. But then when it really got uh, down to the, where the rubber meets the road and Jesus said, you have to eat my body and drink my blood, uh, they looked at him and said, boy, this is a hard saying, amen. Friend, I hope and pray that you're not trying to follow God just for what you can get out of God. Uh, amen. But you've got to take God into your heart and soul. You've got to believe that Jesus come into this world. Amen. That's eating the body. Uh, born of a virgin. Lived a spotless life down here. Died on the cross of Calvary. Rose again the third in the appointed morning uh, that God said for him to keep it up. Jesus said in one place, he said, I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to raise it up again. And friend, I want to tell you right now, we're serving a risen Savior today. Amen. Uh, that's the word of God. And that blood that he shed on the cross of Calvary, friend, he took it. Uh, not only did he take that blood, friend, uh, he took it to the mercy seat. And he sprinkled the mercy seat uh, in the tabernacle in heaven, friend. And he satisfied uh, the God of this universe, friend, the one that made everything, the great I am. Uh, amen. The one true God. He satisfied uh, the one true God and forgave all sin. So that you and I can have an opportunity uh, to get in. Yes, the, we have a foundation, friend. And his name is Jesus. Amen. This book was written about him. We talked about it there when we first got started. Uh, this book was written about this man called Jesus. Amen. And God loved him. Amen. For God so loved the world. Amen. That he gave his only begotten son. Amen. Remember what Abraham said over there on the mountain as they was going up? A uh, preacher a, a few days ago touched on this. Yeah, man, uh, it's good preaching, friend. Anytime you get into this, it's good preaching. Uh, there's a lot, but brother, on what, what, what took place there on that mountain that day. Amen. But as Abraham and Isaac was going up the mountain, God had told Abraham, he said, take thine son, thine only son, uh, up on the mountain and sacrifice him to me. Amen. Uh, and they had the wood and they had the fire. Uh, and Isaac looked up at his father and he said, Father, but where's the lamb? And Abraham, uh, I believe he swallowed right real hard. Amen. I, 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 can just about, I can just about see the man, uh, the Adam's apple in his throat move up and down and everything. And he swallowed right real hard. And these words come out of his mouth. He said, Isaac, God will provide himself a lamb. Praise God, he did, friend. Amen. He, uh, Abraham, Abraham went all the way. Amen. He went all the way. And Jesus went to Calvary. And he rose again that third and appointed morning. Amen. For yours and my justification. He met. He met what God demanded of him. Abraham did there on that mountain. You said, well, he didn't slay his son. No, he stayed his hand, but I believe he was in mid swipe with that knife when God said, stop, or the angel said, stop. And Jesus, I mean, God told Abraham up there, he said, Abraham, uh, you've not withheld your only son from me. And friend God, I believe that day. Now, I, I ain't got no God, uh, no Bible for this anywhere else. But if God ever had a doubt, and the Lord Jesus ever had a doubt, in his mind, he looked at Abraham's faith that day that he did not withhold his only son, the one he loved, the son of his old age, Amen. He did not withhold him, Amen. And God did not withhold. Jesus from the cross that he bore for you and I. Amen. My friend, he has glorified him. Amen. You can get that in John 17 if you want to go over and read that. Friend, we have a foundation this morning uh, that is sure and steadfast. Amen. You'll find, I believe it's in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. He talks to you and I in that verse of scripture. He said, be you steadfast, unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know, friend, 
uh, that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now, I may have uh, butchered that a little bit trying to, uh, to quote it, uh, but you got the gist of that verse of Scripture over there. Uh, friend, uh, God tells us to be steadfast. We've got a foundation down here in this world, friend, and that foundation stands the sure, friend. Uh, when you get into the family of God, you've got somebody on your side, and you will never ever, ever, ever regret one moment of accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Amen. Think of the benefits. Jesus said in John 14, I go away to prepare you a place. And if I go away and prepare you a place, I will come again and then receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye shall be also. Friend, we've got a place prepared for us. Amen. He said, well, don't it have mansions there? Yes, it does. Hey, Amen. I don't know whether I'll have a mansion or whether uh, I'll just have a place there. It don't matter, friend. It don't matter. It's going to be heaven. Eyes have not seen, neither is ear, ear heard, neither is it entered into the heart of man. Uh, what God has went away to prepare for you and I. Hey, Amen. What a hope we have in Jesus Christ. Friend, we have, uh, we have one that stand the sure today. Amen. Uh, the devil can't touch that. Friend, the devil can't, the, the devil, he can't tread on the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Think about that. Paul said over there in one place, he said, you and I are being made more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, which loved us. What a glorious promise that God has given you and I. That's a message God's laid on our heart today. I appreciate, praise his wonderful name, the Spirit of God, what I feel down in my heart and soul. I appreciate him. Amen.